As you learn the basics of faith, avoid the things that will shortcut your faith. Join Kenneth Copeland as he reveals how strife and unrepented sin limit God's power in your life. Next on the Believer's Voice of Victory. Let's go back over there once more to the fourth chapter of Romans and let's, let's look at this again. Therefore, it is of faith. Say, it is of faith. It is of faith. That it might be by grace to the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Well, I would say he's the father of many nations, wouldn't you? Amen. Amen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him or like him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be. Being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet, or he didn't consider either, the deadness of Sarah's womb, and it wasn't dead because she's over 90, and she never had been able to have children in her whole life. So this is a lifelong thing with them. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. Now listen, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform. I'm coming down here. I need to get down here where I can talk to you. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Lord. Now, believing what God has already done and already said the basic fundamentals of faith are so simple you have to have help to misunderstand it. <laughs> well, brother, I mean, you know, you can see it. Look, I mean, see, see there, see there, see there right there? How could I say I'm healed when, when there it is right there? All right, let's deal with that. It's very, very simple. This rash or, or what, you know, whatever it is, what, what, whatever the, the situation is, this is not the truth. This is a fact. The truth about this is himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we being dead to sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. That's the truth about this. Now, if I take the truth of God, put it in my heart, put it in my mouth, believe it with my heart and say it with my mouth and bring corresponding action on the scene, the truth would get rid of this fact. Can you see it? It's, it's really simple. Now Satan will, man, I mean, he'll complicate it every which way he can, trying to get confusion. Now while I, let, let's, let's talk about confusion for a moment. Where there is strife, right. there's confusion right. and every evil work. 
Now, if I was the devil, I mean, that's the first thing I'd go after. I mean, boy, that, that's a shortcut to victory for him. If he can get strife, then there's confusion and every evil work. Amen. That's the reason he pushes that so hard. That's the reason he presses for strife so, so hard. And that's the reason you have, to, you, you, you have to be so on guard. You have to watch after that all the time. I mean, you don't even want to get in strife with the news commentator on TV. Don't sit there and fuss back at the news. If you can't be trusted with the news, cut it off. Amen. I don't understand how come that. Well, why are they not all that? Ah. Uh, well, surely it don't mean watching the news. Hey, the devil don't care what you're watching as long as he can get some strife out of you. Because he shortcutted your faith right there. He, I mean, he's cut square across the deal. You moved over into confusion and you moved over into evil work. And check it out for yourself. Read the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th chapters of 1 Corinthians. It's all right there. The Holy Spirit, through the Apostle Paul, laid out all of the manifestations of the Holy Spirit, what you and I know as the gifts of the, of the Spirit. And then you move on into the 13th chapter where he says, without love, and just, and, and just see what he said. He just, he starts off, and you, you, just, you just take your little pencil and you can mark through tongues and you can mark through prophecy and you can mark through miracles and you can mark through, you can mark through all the gifts of the Spirit just because you decided to fuss with the news. It doesn't take big, big strife and big fussing. I don't even want a little bit, not even a little bit of dirt in the fuel tank of my car. Right. Not even a tiny bit. Amen. Amen. Because I don't want to wind up buying a new engine for that thing. Right. And you just keep putting a grain of sand every, every day or two in there and it's going to cost you. Mm -hmm. I was in a, a little town in Oklahoma in a meeting many years ago. <laughs> and I uh, had been praying during that. We, it was a three week long meeting and this was, um, this was about, a, oh, in the end of the second week there or something, about that time. I don't remember exactly when. And I'm sitting up in the middle of the bed and I got my notebook and everything is scattered out all over the bed and I'm just praying in the spirit and I've been looking at the things the way the Lord wanted me to do this and do that and do that and so forth. And all of a sudden, I just saw this right above me at about a 45 degree angle. It was so real. I'm telling you, Bill, it was so real. It looked, looked like I could just reach up and, and, and get that thing. It just, just was right there, right in front of my face like this. It was a pipe that I, I would guess it, guess at it, at about a five inch pipe in diameter. It's, it's, you know, about this big, I guess. Just right in front of my face. And there was this little, just this little spew coming out of the end of it. Just, just a little, tiny spray of water. And, it, and, and I, it seemed like to me in the vision, it seemed like to me I could feel it. <laughs> Just spewing me in the face. And I looked and, and that, that thing was about, I guess that pipe was, oh, I don't know, several feet long. And up on the other end of it, there was a, a gush flow of water coming at that pipe. 
and it hit the pipe and just went everywhere. It could not flow through that pipe. And then it just disappeared. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, that's your spirit. I said, what, what's wrong here? He said, unrepented sins of strife, little grains of it at a time that seem so insignificant to you that you didn't even stop and deal with it until it has got your spirit so clogged up my glory can't flow through it. See, you repent of the nasty stuff, the real ugly stuff. And I said, well, Lord, I, uh, I, I don't really know. I don't remember what, and he just, all of a sudden, He just showed me one. Just a few days before I came to this meeting, I was at home. Gloria came in and she had a big sack of cantaloupes that she bought on the corner down from, from our house just a few blocks away before you turned in off of the main thoroughfare there. There was a guy out there and he had his little stand up and he's selling cantaloupes. <laughs> and it was this big sack. I, and I, man, you know, I really like cantaloupes anyway. And I was, this is good. And she came in and she put it. She said, I wish you'd look at this. There were two good cantaloupes in the top of the sack. And all the rest of them were bad. I said, give me that sack. She said, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going up there and spank him. She said, no, you're not. I said, no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> but boy, that got to me, man. I want to go up there and just feed him two or three of those, you know, just take a whole list, Bubba. <laughs> oh, I really did, man. I, I seriously considered it, <laughs> man. But see, I didn't stop and repent of that. Now, I'm, I'm really feeling ugly toward that guy. One more grain of sand. One more, one more piece of spiritual pollution. Over, 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 over. Little fuss with it and that one on the street. Little irritation at a waitress. Just this. this, this. And, 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 and I'll tell you what, if you'll fall for it, the devil will see to it that you get well fed because he'll have somebody waiting on you everywhere you go. There's going to be somebody going to cross you. Or I will tell you this. Now, I know, I, I know you probably never would do this, but uh, uh, I'll go down here and preach to Doc Barkley because I know he's done this. <laughs> now, I mean, particularly back there before I ever got into the word of faith and so forth, I'd get mad at my tools. I'd just throw them plumb across the garage, you know. Go preach down there. And you know, I knew I'd find uh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Amen. And you say something intelligent, like, dad gun it. <laughs> See, the problem with that you just don't know how to spell damn. Mm. <laughs> Cause that's what you did. You just stood right there and cussed. Did you know that that's where most of those words came from back when they had a profanity fine in this country in the early, early, early years? If you said damn, it cost you. They'd find you on the street for it. But if you said, dang, they didn't, that wasn't in the book. So instead of saying God, you said, golly. <laughs> yeah. So it's not the actual word itself. It's the emotion behind it. Just because you're not allowed to say, damn, you can stand there and just get mad and say all kinds of stuff. It's the same sin. Why is it a sin? Because it's polluting your spirit. 
It's polluting the part of you that's holy. It's, it's polluting the power portion of your life. It's, it's, messing, it's messing around with that place in you that is in the greatness and the likeness of God and, and filling it full of trash and filling it full of ugliness and clogging it up so there's no free flow of the Spirit. And then you wonder why you, you, you go to church and lay hands on somebody and nothing happens. Well, just get real. Man, I got busy that afternoon. I said, oh God, yeah, that's right. And I've been working on it ever since. Amen. And that was, man, that was 45 years ago. But you have to work on that all the time. You have to stay ready on that all the time. Don't you let, don't you let some little Amen. bitty thing like that go by. You just stop right where you said, no, Lord, no, no, no. And quit lying. Yes. Amen. Amen. Did you, don't you know in the book of Ephesians, he said, quit lying. This was written to born again, baptized, tongue talking, healing, believing Christians. Stop lying. Brother Copeland and I don't lie. You just did. <laughs> I don't either. Hell yeah. Check it out. Check yourself out. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll be down there tomorrow at three o'clock. You come dragging in there at 3.05. Well, you lied yesterday. You need to repent. Yep. Oh, Brother Copeland, you're being too picky. Well, I am being picky. Right. The reason I'm picky is because the devil's picky. Right. And if you won't be picky, he will. Well, I really didn't mean, it don't matter what you meant, it's what you said. Amen. 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 Come to that place where you're busy all the time, all the time in the area of your own spirit, soul, and body. And you get to thinking about something. You know, I told them that, you know, let, 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 me, let me go in, in a little bit direct, direct, different direction of this. Hey, folks, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. Yes. We're, we're, just, we're not just, just Christian people just kind of floating around here. No, 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 not this group. Not this group. We're responsible. Much, we've learned much. God has blessed us much yes. and much is required. Yes. Amen. Amen. I didn't say walk in condemnation with yourself. No. That's a different than judging yourself. Right. Just stand back and take a look at it. Now, was that the truth or was that you, you just make it up? <laughs> and one of the things that you certainly want to do is you catch yourself lying, stop and correct it. Yeah. Stop right on the spot and say, now, wait a minute, let me back up. You know, <laughs> I, I, it was always very interesting to me how Brother Hagin, he wouldn't say, I've pastored 12 years. He would say, I pastored almost 12 years. Well, nine months and a little to be exact. He wouldn't, he wouldn't even risk the slightest exaggeration of anything. Because we have this idea that, well, if I didn't, you know, I must have done that 10,000 times. You know better than that. <laughs> Whatever it was you were talking about, you exaggerated it. You need a little help in getting somebody to understand how many times you did that. But it wasn't 10,000 times, it's probably four. <laughs> well, correct it. No, I didn't do that 10,000 times. If I said that once, I must have said it a million times. No, you didn't. <laughs> What's happening? We're, folks, we're dealing with the most precious thing on the face of this earth, your born again spirit. Yeah. And, the, and the way the Holy Spirit has has 
authority. See, if we don't, let's go back to the main line here. If we don't give authority to his written word, then when it comes time when we need him to be on the scene right now, then there are situations where he can't do anything about it. But the time has come. Yes, it is. And is now, and now is, saith the Lord, yes. that these things will make the difference. For in years gone by, some of these things were lighter weight in your life, but now each day that goes by, they get weightier and weightier and weightier because the time is drawing nigh. The time has come and, and now is for my people, particularly those that I've been teaching and training for years in the word of faith. It's time for you to take hold and go up to another level. Come on up here with me, saith the Lord. Walk with me, saith God. Talk with me. Let me have my place in your life. Let me have the little things. Let me have those little grains of sand. Let me have those. Get those out. Get, get rid of that. Spend some time with me, saith the Lord, and you will find yourself in a much cleaner place, and you will find my gifts and my spiritual laws working more proficiently in you every day that goes by. And it won't be long till you'll look around and say, my, my, look how things have changed. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.